guys, right out of the gate, I'm gonna jump into this. I'm gonna, if you're a current subscriber to the Adobe Creative Cloud, say that 10 times fast, system, and you've got Photoshop and Lightroom or Premiere or whatever package you have with them, I'm gonna tell you how I saved money from it if I wanted to keep that service. And secondly, I'm gonna tell you how I really saved a lot of money by not having that service. Let's do it. So here's what I did, right? So first of all, understand that I decided for myself that I'm just gonna be done with the membership completely. I wanted to cancel it. And for me, I had uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and I had the Photoshop and Lightroom uh, thing, right? In total, it was about to bill me, I think it was $345 and like $45 or whatever it was. Maybe it was $360, okay? And I got the email from them saying, you know, your subscription's about to auto renew. And I was like, oh, you know, it's like the last thing I wanna be spending right now in a quarantine with no business is on that, right? So I was like, all right, what, what can I do here? So I, will, I, I started doing research and I figured out that I don't need those, those programs and I'll talk about that in a second. So long story short, I decided to just cancel the membership. So I logged into my Adobe Creative account and you click on your plan and you click on cancel and then you click on next and then that's gonna bring you to another screen. And on that screen, they're just gonna offer you money back to stay a current subscriber. So in the case of Premiere Pro, they were gonna give me a, uh, well here it is, this is what they offer me. You can see it right here on the screen. And as you can see, they're giving me a very nice discount just by, uh, just by agreeing to stay a current member. And the crazy thing is that if I didn't click cancel, that never would have come up. I never would have had that offer. And they would have just billed my American Express card for the, for the annual subscription all over again. And like, I would have missed out on 50 bucks, you know, like that, that's, that's sort of frustrating when, it, when you think about it, you know, especially when times are tough right now. Now I know Adobe made some announcement months ago about like, if you cancel your membership and then reactivate it, they'll give you two months free or something like that. It was something like that. Um, and I got a bunch of DMs about people uh, telling me about that and I thought that was really cool. But this is a little bit different. This is like, I'm saying, no, I, I don't wanna do it anymore, cancel it, and now they're gonna give you um, some incentive to stay on board. But if you don't say anything, they're just gonna bill you ongoing. So there you go. So if you have an upcoming subscription that's about to bill you, then try that and see what your options are. If you're a monthly person, I think that they also bill monthly for these programs. If you don't wanna do the annual uh, program, they may offer something very similar to that where they give you a few months free if you click cancel. So either way, I'm pretty sure that you guys can save some money uh, by doing that. So definitely check that out. I was pretty surprised. And then it gets even better. And then today, I went to go cancel my other subscription with Adobe. So I'm totally done with Adobe, which is the Photoshop and Lightroom plan. And that one um, was gonna bill $119 for another year's worth of service. So I went in there and I go to cancel it and I click cancel and they did have a, an option for $99 and that would have saved me 20 bucks right there by doing this little trick. But I said, no, 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 cancel it. And then it connected me with a, with a chat person and then the chat person had to verify some information because now I'm closing out like the whole account. And he goes, well, what if we gave you three months for free? And it's like, that was really cool. And if I wanted to stay with Adobe products, that would have been an awesome incentive. And that would have saved even more money, making it pretty much worth keeping at that point. So, but I said, no, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not doing any business right now and there's no point in paying for things that I'm just not gonna be using for, I don't know how long. So uh, get rid of it. So they did and they canceled it. But yet, if you do the chat thing, you maybe even get, get even more money back as I was offered and I thought that was really incredible too. So there you go, that's a way if you're gonna stay with Adobe, you guys can make some money. Now, let me talk about why I'm getting rid of it completely because this is far more interesting. So at the beginning of this whole stupid pandemic started, I started reevaluating my monthly expenses. What are the subscriptions? And with me, I had a ton of them, right? I, sat, I literally sat down and I made a list of everything, prioritized it, figured out what I gotta keep, and what I, what I don't really need. And obviously anything that has to do with photography processing and business right now isn't exactly a priority at the moment, okay? 
So for me, one of the one of the big hitters was Adobe. It was the Premiere Pro, which was 20 bucks a month ongoing, and then the Photoshop and Lightroom. You guys know that I switched away from Lightroom uh, about three years ago. I used Capture One, so really it was just the Photoshop, and they don't have anything cheaper than $10 a month, so then that was added to it. So it's, you know, it's $30 a month, $360 a year, or whatever it winds up being with tax. And that was annoying, and I didn't want to have to pay that. So I started my research earlier on to figure out alternatives, because I, 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 I've never been a fan of the subscription model. When Adobe started doing that, like I understood it's good for them because they're able to pay their people and programmers. They're able to keep the software up to date at all times. Um, it has a lot of really good pros to it. And for a lot of creatives that are just used to using Adobe products, myself was included in that camp. Um, and technically it's still a part of that camp, really. I mean, I should be using those products by, by the definition of like who they're designed for. Um, but honestly, there are just really awesome alternatives out there that I have now found. So two things. I have replaced Premiere Pro with DaVinci Resolve 16, the free version, by the way, not the paid version. There's two versions of that. There's a paid version. Paid version, it's a one-time fee, it's $300, which even at that would be a really good deal. Um, but I didn't get that because I don't need the, the advanced features that that includes. Uh, for me and the videos that I make and anything I do with clients and things, the free version is way more than what I need. And it's almost exactly identical to Premiere Pro. It is uncanny how unbelievable it is. And just to give you guys a little spoiler alert, I know a lot of you have been looking for that Paris video that we did last year, seven days in Paris with the fashion model, behind the scenes, photo shoots and all that good stuff. I had all my Instagram last year. Finally. I'm making that video. It is a big video to make. It is massive. It's going to be, um, it's going to be like another Las Vegas video on my YouTube channel. You guys can expect that coming up here soon, um, and that will hopefully quench any BTS uh, videos that you guys have been dying for. Um, once you see that, that's going to have to tide you over until the quarantine is over and I can shoot again. <laughs> um, but just know that I'm using DaVinci 16 Resolve for that with no issues whatsoever. Performance is amazing. The features, the keystrokes, the shortcuts, it's just identical to Premiere. Like It's just unbelievable and it's completely free. Like I couldn't believe it. I used it for a month before I decided to cancel Premiere and I was like, yep, no, no question. Bye bye, bye Adobe. Unbelievable. The second uh, part of that is to replace Photoshop. And that one was a trickier one because I was like, how can you replace Photoshop? Photoshop is Photoshop. Oh, but you can, you can. And when you Google this, you'll find a lot of different options. Let me save you some time if you want what I think is the best option and it is again, practically identical to the actual program and how it all works, you're going to want to uh, download a program called Affinity Photo. I'll put a link down below to, to the websites of all these programs. You can just go to their pages and check it out. They're not affiliate links. This stuff is, is it's, it's, it's just to go to their site to check it out. Um, but I started using Affinity Photo and again, for me, like I would consider myself more of like an intermediate Photoshop user. Um, I'm not a person that you know, like just uses a ton of presets or actions or any garbage like that. I know I'm saying garbage, but I'm just saying like my photography, the way I shoot it, the way that I process it, it it's very clean, it's very concise out of camera. So there's very minimal things that I do to Photoshop. There is some special sauce to my formula and the way I edit and, and do the processing on my photos. And that's done with plugins and the plugins that I use are actually compatible with um, Affinity Photo as well. So that was a seamless transition. It also integrates with Capture One and Lightroom. Like you can uh, edit right out of those uh, programs back and forth just like you could in Photoshop and brings over the, the, it's unbelievable. The performance is great. Content aware fill and some of the advanced features of Photoshop that like a lot of people really love that are afraid they're gonna lose. All that stuff lives inside of Affinity Photo. You can download it for free. There's a 10 day trial. I did the 10 day trial. Honestly, I was sold after 90 minutes of playing with it. Um, even my graphics, my Wacom, my, um, even my graphics tablet, all the shortcuts are exactly the same on the keystrokes. Like it's perfect. It really is. And I don't see that changing at all. It's a 10 day, there's a 10 day free trial for that program. And then after that, it's 49 bucks and that's it. And you're done. It's not $49 a month. It's $49 period and then you're done and you get all the free updates in the future. 
Uh, to me, that just makes a whole hell of a lot more sense. Now, I understand that there's a lot of creative people out there that may disagree or you may rely on specific features of Photoshop or you really have the whole InDesign suite. Like you, you work with Premiere and then you import out of Photoshop. Like if you integrate all those programs together and, and you have a workflow in place, then, then don't take my advice. But if you're like what I think is the majority of photographers, especially ones that are watching my channel that are starting out to intermediate, then this is really eye-opening. Like you guys need to go and check this out for yourselves. I'm not saying it's the right choice because that's subjective to all of you and maybe it is and maybe it isn't and there's no right or wrong answer. All I'm doing is telling you what I'm doing and giving you my experience and so far, after a few months of using this stuff, it has been phenomenal with no problems at all and I am now free of all those monthly subscriptions which really was a, a huge thing. And to put that in perspective, you know, a lot of you are like, oh yeah, you know, whatever, 10 bucks a month for Photoshop and Lightroom. A lot of you probably don't even need Premiere because you're not making videos. Um, you know, that adds up. And like for me with Premiere and all that stuff, like, you know, I, I, they went subscription, I don't know how many years ago it was, but when I built my new PC, that's when I had to switch over. So it had to have been a three years ago. And since that time, I've spent over $1,100 basically on those only two programs is what I use and here I am now three years later scratching my head thinking to myself well if, if some little birdie told me three years ago to use DaVinci Resolve and uh, Affinity Photo or whatever uh, I would have an $1,100 check in my hand today and I you know and I, I never would have looked back so we're talking about real dollars this stuff adds up and two or three years goes by like this and before you know it you know you you've spent quite a bit on stuff. So check it out. Maybe maybe it's helpful for you guys. Hopefully I provided some value in today's video. And uh, if you liked it, definitely give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, look out for that Paris video. Um, that's gonna take some time to edit. It's massive. There's seven days of footage where we went all around Paris with with, with our model. Um, it's it's really a pretty insane video. I'm not gonna like try to make it too polished or, or too crazy. I just want to get the content in there and, and make it fun to watch and, and just get it out there. To put this, so right now I'm like pretty much done with day one and I've got six more days to go and it's taking me probably three or four days to get that far. So you can kind of do the math here. So um, as soon as it's done though, I'll be on the channel. You guys can look forward to that. All right, so that's it. Hopefully um, that saves some money for some of you. Uh, it's saving me, uh, so right out of the gate, I've only spent 50 bucks. So let's do a quick recap. Instead of spending $360 with Adobe, I've now spent 50 bucks and I'm done completely. I'm out clean here and I have a Photoshop substitute. I have a Premiere Pro substitute and I've been using Capture One now for the past three years. Capture One, by the way, has a standalone program option. I think it's $299. I'm currently in their annual subscription, but once that comes up for renewal again, I'll probably just do the outright version and then just end all these subscriptions altogether um, because I just don't want to deal with it at all anymore. And that's a personal thing, I get it. It is really good for a lot of you, especially those of you that just want to pay monthly and you're used to that. Um, and it's good for the industry, it's good for the business. It's, and like I said, like, like it, it's a good thing. It's just, for me personally, again, like thinking back to the video I made yesterday about physical gear, it's the same mindset here with the software. It's like, do you really need Photoshop? Like, do you need to pay that money and do you need these programs? Or can you find another program that's 99% the same um, and do, and, or relearn a couple of new tricks or whatever and be able to do it without spending that money? Um, and in my case, the answer is yes, if I'm being honest with myself. So I'm not telling you to do anything. What I am saying is that I want you to, to take out a piece of paper and pencil and write down what you really use. What you really, what, you know, if you use Photoshop and you use Lightroom and all that, what are the features that you really love the most? And then answer yourself, can you get those things in another program? And if you can, see if you, see if does that program offer a one price and you're done? Or can you get it for free like I did? And I think that that, is the way to go. At, ver at the very least, it gets you thinking about what you really need. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Later.